Hey, thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Wetmore, and I'm going to share with you my five thoughts from Saturday's Twins win in Seattle. The Twins did win 8-5. to That's good news for the Twins and their fans. The bad news for those interested parties is that Trevor May had to leave his start early. Uh, May was... Pitching fairly well, he'd given up two runs and to the first batter in the fourth inning. He took a line drive off his elbow. Now, he was able to recover, underhand toss it to first, but he was clearly in a lot of pain. Manager Paul Molitor, Twins trainers, came out to the mound. They had to pull May from the game. The Twins took x-rays on May, and if there's a silver lining in the injury, it's that they revealed no kind of damage. It sounds like just a bruise. For now, anyways, for Trevor May, uh, the Twins are officially listing him as day-to-day, but that's really kind of too bad for the Washington native who was pitching in his home state. He had said last week that the last time he pitched at Safeco Field was in the semifinals of his high school state tournament. Uh, So kind of a cool return trip for May, pitching in front of a ton of friends and family. Unfortunately for May and the Twins, it ended prematurely. Um, the bullpen cleaned up. They There were some troubled spots as usual, but to ask the bullpen to throw that many innings, uh, the Twins were still able to get out of it. Win 8-5, to five, closer Glenn Perkins got the save. Uh, Casey Fiend with a clean inning setting up. That was thought number one. Thought number two. Joe Maurer has now gone 55 games in a row dating back to the 2014 season in which he hasn't hit a home run. Uh, Tip of the cap to the Star Tribune's Phil Miller for first making me aware of that streak. It's kind of a surprising number. Uh, Of course, Maurer's going to be compared to his 2009 home run output when he hit 28 at the Metrodome. Uh, Maurer's not that kind of power hitter, but it does surprise me that a player of his caliber who hits the ball in the barrel so frequently and is so good at hitting line drives and is comfortable hitting in two strike counts anywhere, doesn't hit more home runs. He should be a 10 to 15 home run hitter in my opinion. And really it's been a little surprising the past couple seasons to see the power dry up. Now um, some of the extra base power is drying up too. A little bit of a concerning trend for Joe Maurer. I wrote about in my five thoughts column, a little trivia question you can use with your friends at the bar. It involves Joe Maurer and home runs. Uh, look that up in my five thoughts column. Uh, it's it's worth tricking any of your friends uh, on a little bit of trivia uh, involving Joe Maurer and some home runs. Some fun stuff in that column. Thought number three also involves Joe Maurer. Apparently, Twins manager Paul Molitor gave some thought before Saturday's game to batting Maurer leadoff. This with Danny Santana on the bench and in all kinds of a rut. Uh, I'm on board with the Maurer to leadoff move. I've said that in the past that I think it would make sense to have Maurer atop the lineup. Hey, listen, he's the Twins' best on-base threat in the lineup, top to bottom. There's no question about it in my mind right now. On-base percentage is a very important skill to have at the top of the lineup. So even though Maurer might not create havoc on the bases and he might not steal bases, um, it's not a crazy idea at all to consider batting Maurer leadoff especially given what we've seen from Danny Santana this season, who continues to struggle. Thought number four, uh, the Twins tied their season high with eight runs on Saturday. They did so with some good contributions from a couple of guys you maybe don't expect very much from. Eduardo Nunez and Shane Robinson both had kind of nice days at the yard. I think especially Robinson. You know, Nunez had two RBIs. One of them was on a four hop single up the middle while the the other was on a bases loaded walk in the first inning so not to take anything away because all of the runs batted in count those are those all go on your total and at the end of the year they don't ask how they ask how many but uh, Robinson to me had a little bit more impressive day and uh, played pretty well in the field too I've been a little impressed with what I've seen some from Robinson I'm not you know, ready to go too far and say he's a starting caliber center fielder. But with Sh- Jordan Schaefer struggling, I am curious to see how Molitor continues to use Robinson. If he becomes more of an everyday guy, if Molitor views that situation as a righty-lefty platoon right now, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Sunday, it sounds like the Twins are going to face another left-hander. That's not finalized yet, but uh, I'll be curious to see Robinson's playing time going forward.
Thought number five, this is a Mariner's thought. Nelson Cruz drove in a pair of runs in the first inning. He now has 20 RBIs, which, um, according to the Mariners, is the most in the month of April since Brett Boone in 2003. You'll, of course, remember Brett Boone from the end of his career, which was a forgettable stretch with the Minnesota Twins. But nice Seattle Mariners career, of course. And he is the last player to drive in 20 for the M's in the month of April. Uh, the franchise record... 30, I think. Ken Griffey Jr. in 1997. Wow. 20 home runs, or uh, excuse me, 20 RBIs is still a ways away from the Twins record from 2014 anyways. Chris Colabello drove in 27 runs in 23 games, if you remember. That incredibly hot start to the season for the Twins' 30-year-old rookie, who's now in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. Anyways, a lot of fun stuff crammed into this five thoughts. Check out the website, Phil Mackey and I will have another Touch Em All podcast going up Sunday night. You can find that on iTunes. Just search Touch Em All. Uh, weekly conversation on the Twins where a couple of baseball nerds get together and talk about um, some fun stuff that's gone on in the in the past week, whether it involves the Twins, Major League Baseball, whatever. We just like to talk ball. So check that out. Follow me on Twitter, at Derek Wetmore. Until next time, thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you later.